up, though? Peace to everybody in the chat. Good Sunday night conversation. You already know what it is, man. You know what's going on with me. What's going on with you, man? Welcome to Megalodon Mentality. You already know what it is. You should know that already. What's good with you? Check in. Let's talk about it. No. What up, though, my guy, Mr. Lee, the first one in the building to comment. He said, I'm glad you're making this one. I told people for years that Guy Fisher's brother is the one that snitched on Nikki and the organization. I'd have to say you're absolutely right. Uh, Mr. 99 says the mob killed Sharmeka over money. You could be absolutely right. I see things a little bit different, though. We're going to discuss that tonight. You know what I'm saying? Uh, shout out to the God, Mr. Miller in the building. He said, welcome to Detroit and the whole east side. Shout out to all the beautiful queens and solidified kings in the chat. Bulletproof love from Brownsville, Jamaica, Queens, NYC every day. What's good, Fi? You already know what's going on with me, homie. Ten toes down, man. All across their neck at the same time, you feel me? And when he said that to me, it's time for me to say this to you. So without further ado, it's welcome to Detroit, motherfucker. <laughs> Never see another day. Top at your face. Bet you never see another day. When I get to shooting this motherfucker, get out the way. Zero to a hundred, my baby. It ain't got no delay. Real. What up, though? With y'all alone tonight, man. Peace to the 5% nation of God's and earth. Shout out to my beloved Justice Allah. You already know. How we rocking? What's good? Let me change out of that bang. Let's get back to that format. Let's see what my guy say. He said, R.P. Alpo Martinez, MJ Two Cup, DJ K Slate, Tupac, and Stan Moment. Legends never die. They are immortalized. And salute to all who lost loved ones to gun violence and natural causes as well. Moment of silence. You already know how we rocking this way. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Ha <laughs> Yeah. I see you, baby. What's going on, man? Young go ahead in the building. Absolutely. I'm going down to the bottom. Sonny Black say, what up, O? Hope all is well. Same to you, homie. I hope all is well with you, too. I hope all is well. Everybody's prosperous. They get money. They in school. They getting good grades. Uh, 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 you know, if, 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 if they need inspiration, they getting inspired. You know, I hope all is well with you as well. You feel me? Every day, you know how I get that. My every day, you got the dog. 
And then we're going to talk about it. What's up with Nikki, man? What's up with these Fisher brothers, man? You feel me? I was watching. I don't, I don't even know how I started watching this today, but I watched, I was watching Mr. Untouchable. I watched it last night. You know what I'm saying? You know, I don't, Netf I don't Netflix and chill. You know what I'm saying? I Tubi and chill. You know what I'm saying? I think I was watching Tubi or something, and it was on Tubi and shit. And then I saw it on Prime. So I watched it again today. I'm like, man, why is Nicky Barnes sticking around my motherfucking um, algorithm like that? You feel me? What I figured out when I analyzed it a little bit further was, damn, man, the Fisher brothers were pretty slimy niggas, you know? Now, of course, I realize a bunch of y'all going to say, oh, here we go, take it up for these rats again. He always take it up for the rats and this, that, the other. But nah, motherfuckers like to pinpoint the evils that, that men do, especially after they pick sides. You peep, you peep, motherfuckers, motherfuckers will love to, to, man, you heard what I said, you know what I'm saying? Interesting topic, where you get this idea from, long way from Alpo Martinez, honor and respect, what up though, how you be? Man, listen, if you look at, look at, go back and look at the Mr. Untouchable. Like I said, I, that's where it came from, man. I watched it twice. When I watched it last night, I think I then went to sleep on it at like 1 a.m., 2 a.m. And then I watched it again today, man. It's on Prime. It's on Prime Video. Long story short, man, if you look at Guy Fisher's actions along with his brother, and everything else, man. Everybody saying Nikki wrong, Nikki wrong. Man, bullshit, yo. I got to, listen, we got to revisit that, dog. We got to revisit that, dog. You know what I'm saying? I treat my brother as I treat myself. We got to revisit that, dog. That was the mantra that was handed down. That was the motto that was put in place amongst these men that called themselves the council. In that event, Nikki took his lick. A lot of people st skip over that fact. Nikki took his lick. He got life in prison and he was still doing business on behalf of the council in prison. You know what I'm saying? Man, it wasn't until niggas began to dishonor their end of the relationship, their end of the bargain, their end of the, if you want to call it, rules. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like Nikki said, it boiled down to what good is a rule if it ain't a jewel that's fit for the crown of a king? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Straight up and down, man. What good is a rule if it ain't a jewel that's fit for the crown of a king? J Money, what up, though? How you be? Juanito Genovese. What's good with you, homie? <clears throat> Say, cool. I watched the Craig O'Harlem Mafia story on Paid and Full TV. It was dope. Salute to you. Um, I haven't seen that. I got to check that out. I seen some, some Detroit niggas calling L.A. I think it's Big Boss Films, Big Boss Studios. They call L.A. and do -Wop the YBI of Harlem, and I took offense to that. I took offense to that. I didn't even watch the video. I'm going to watch it and break it down. I want to know why they feel like that. You know what I'm saying? Aside from the fact that L.A. and Duop was pretty young niggas, they were no Butch Jones. There was no uh, 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 Wonderful Wayne. There was no Raymond Peoples. You know what I'm saying? Like, And that ain't no slight to them. It's just who they wasn't. These is niggas they wasn't. That's Poe included. You know what I'm saying? When you go, you can add Rich and Poe, AZ, and all them young niggas to it. They still wasn't no YBI. You feel me? They wasn't doing shit YBI was doing and how they was doing it. That's just my humble opinion, though. Are you talking about the Mr. Untouchable Doc? I am. 
Yes, I am talking about the Mr. Untouchable Doc. How we feeling about Nikki? Do we feel like Nikki was fucked up for doing that to to Guy Richards? To Guy, I said Guy Richie. To Guy motherfucking Fisher. Man, I don't. After further investigation of the situation, just on my own end, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, Troy Reed, Troy Reed, I, I heard Troy Reed speak about Guy Fisher and Poe and him not knowing that he was going to see Poe and this and that and the other, and maybe not even liking the relationship that Troy Reed had developed with Poe. But his brother's a rat, though. Wally is a full-blown informant. I wonder how his relationship is with his brother. You know? Now, he's supposed to have a documentary with him, I guess. I wonder if he'll ask him that question. How's his relationship with his brother? Underworld was too small. Alpo messed with Guy Fisher's daughter and one of his girlfriends. That's interesting. I heard something to that effect, though. I don't respect say nah, oh, they was young and their own boss. I, YBI wasn't that. Well, then you agree with me that they wasn't YBI, basically. You feel me? We agree. Even though we agree differently, you agree in a different direction than I do. You feel me? But YBI was young and their own boss, homeboy. That shit wasn't ran by one. Man, you had the YBI killers. You had, like I say, dog, it was, it was, it was different sections of YBI ran by different crews, you know what I'm saying? All under that same umbrella, but I understand what you, ran by different leaders, rather, you know? I understand what you're saying, though, but in the end, we... It, it, <coughs> 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 Every day, every day, twice on Sunday, four times when Green Bay is playing, eight times when the Detroit Lions win. So we both agree is what I was saying, honor and respect. We just agree differently. Wonderful Wayne was his own boss. But Jones was his own boss. That's the so it ain't no difference as far as what you're saying. See, unless you do you know you do you know who YBI is in the history of YBI? Do you know who Raymond Peoples is? You know who Wonderful Wayne is. You know what I'm, I'm just saying. You know who Kirk Kirk McGirt is. Not even comparable, especially when you look at the money. When you look at the money aspect, I tell them, Jay Money, don't talk that shit. <laughs> talk that shit. You know what I'm saying? What's good for the goose is good for the gander. If God looks down on Nikki, he's got to look down on Wally. Great comment. That's a great comment. That's a great comment because motherfuckers is looking at Nikki like he folded the organization when Guy Fisher brother did. Now, how does that work? How do Guy Fisher brother inform on the entire organization, including Guy Fisher? Now, he informed on his brother as well. Uh, he brings down the, organ the same organization that consequently puts his brother in power. Did you niggas working together? <laughs> like look, like look, like look, 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 look. You take Nikki out the game. Guy Fisher was his protege, so he becomes the number one by proxy or by default. You know what I'm saying? Because Frank is a bully anyway. Frank ain't no boss. Frank is Luca Brasci. 
You feel me? So he ain't no boss. The other dudes he got, Guy Fisher takes over the day to day operations as far as the business is concerned. Correct. And then he seats himself at at Nikki's table, literally. And Nikki even said it when you look at the Mister Untouchable doc. He said, "Man, it was his obsession with being me." You know what I'm saying? He wanted to be Nikki in every aspect of the game, even down to his woman or whatnot. And that's what got him beat. That's what got him beat, man. That nigga with Nikki said, I might not be able to run it from here, but I can show a record. <laughs> I might not be able to run it, but I can wreck that motherfucking ship. You know what I'm saying? They all took an oath to the rules, Nikki went to Frank James and told him to lay down Tito Johnson and Guy Fisher for violating the rules. Captain Crunch, you're getting ahead of me, but you're absolutely right, and they did not. Mother and, and Nikki said that he felt like, oh, okay, motherfuckers are starting to realize I'm here and they there and I ain't home. So they can basically do what they want. So they telling me what they want to tell me or, or whatnot, and go ahead and do other shit. You feel me? Facts. Then you can you can hear the hate, and I understand some of the hate, but you can just hear the hate in motherfuckers' voice as soon as that doc comes on because they talking about I hate even sitting here talking like this. <clears throat> Nick Nick needs this. This is what he need. He need the limelight. He needs somebody to talk about. This is what he need to survive. Nigga, you do too. From wherever you talking from, whoever that was talking that shit in the beginning, he need this. I hate even sitting here talking, nigga, jazz, uh, uh, um, Frank, them niggas need that shit too. Because without him, you ain't even a memory. You feel me? Without Nikki, they ain't even a memory. <laughs> so they, they can cut that bullshit out. You know what I'm saying? I do, but they wasn't 15 years old getting millions. What? 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 Man, Kurt McGurk went to New York City and bought a motherfucking Benz off the showroom flow, man. Cash money. Little duffel bag boy shit. Who wasn't teenage millionaires? Of course, now some of them was older. But you tripping with that one, homeboy. <laughs> you tripping with that one, homeboy. Research YBI, man, and, and see what you see, homie. Nick did not break the rules first. They did. Absolutely, Kevin Crunch. It all, it's all the big payback. It's just like Captain Kurt said in that other comment. If it's good for the goose, then it's good for the gander. Flat out. Flat out, nigga. If y'all niggas can, can say fuck what we, this thing, this little thing of ours, this thing we built and put together, blah, they split cool, then I'm going to say fuck it too. You feel me? I can't run the ship, but I sure correct that motherfucker, nigga. R.P. Frank James. <clears throat> You say Jazz still alive. Nick did not put Jazz in. Both Nick and Jazz both convicted on the same case. Jazz is talking that shit in the motherfucker. Uh, Jazz is talking that shit in the documentary. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> he feels some type of way about Nick. And Nick said he was, Nick said the nigga Jazz uh, uh, fucked himself up trying to look like he was independent of him when he wasn't independent of Nick at all. But he was trying to establish himself outside of, of, the, outside of Nick or, or make it seem as if he was established outside of Nicky Barnes or this not the organization when he was not. <clears throat> so that's why he fucked himself up. You can, feel, you can see the envy and hate in his blood too. You know what I'm saying?
No, nah, he don't know his history like that. But look at this, though. Let's talk about this, man. Let's talk about this. We 20 minutes in. Let's listen to a clip from James Jackson. Now, did anybody know who James Jackson is? Maybe I should do a short. Maybe I should do a short <clears throat> recap. Check this out, man. In the 1980s, Raymond Clark, among other co-conspirators with James Jackson, who was thought to take over the Nicky Barnes drug empire in Harlem, New York. Clark was convicted and sentenced to 50 years imprisonment August 25th, 1988, on multiple offenses, one of which being the murder of Beverly Shamika Ash. Now ask yourself this. These are Guy Fisher's successors, right? Let's look at this totem pole. Guy Fisher goes in, not Guy Fisher, Nikki Barnes goes in, Guy Fisher becomes the boss. Guy Fisher goes in, this James Jackson dude becomes the boss. These are each of each other's successors. The Clark dude is a co-conspirator in the whole organization and the crew. He's the one that's supposed to pull off the hit on Shemekha and the James Jackson dude if I'm if I saying his name right, James Jackson dude, when he gets booked, he tells the feds that the Raymond Clark dude is the one that killed Shaw Mecca. Now let's take a, a listen to this and then we'll be right back and get into it. Question, so just you and Romar were alone when you had the conversation? Answer, right. Question, would you tell us what Romar said? Answer, Romar said, that was my work. The other night up in the Monarch Bar with Shamika Beverly Ash. That was me, red alert. That was my work. And he went to the closet and he pulled out a rubber mask, white face, dark hair, with the eyes cut out and the nose. Cut out, and he put it on. He also took out a dark trench coat and he put it on. And he says, you want to see how I did it? And he came up to me and he said, yes, they think it was a white guy. It wasn't a white guy. It was me, red alert. And he came up to me and he had his back hunched and he said, I walked in with my back hunched down and she was sitting at the bar stool and I just shot her. Q, what type of mask was it that Defendant Clark was wearing? A, it was like one of those Halloween masks. B, a rubber mask with dark hair, Caucasian color, with the eyes and the nose cut out, that you could slip over your head. Now, you hear, if you hear that correctly, that's him saying how he went in there with a, ma a mask on with the uh, with the eyes cut out, the, I guess, the, and his back hunched over to look like a white man when he supposedly did the hit. Why would you hit your boss's girl? Somebody answer that. Now, I'm not talking about the sexual relations Guy Fisher was having with Shameka after uh, 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 Nikki Barnes went to prison. I'm talking about if the Jackson dude is indeed Guy Fisher's successor. Because, you know, the way it's written up, this is court documents that's saying that, you know what I'm saying, uh, 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 Raymond Clark, uh, along with James Jackson, where the successors of the organization took over the Nikki Barnes empire or whatnot, if that's the case. Why would you hit Shameka if Guy Fisher is with her or not? If he got the gall to be sitting in Apollo kissing on her, because that's what Nikki Barnes said. Nikki Barnes said that we had bought the Apollo and Guy Fisher was taking care of the day-to-day -day operations there and everything and the renovations. And he got word that he was sitting up in the balcony kissing on his girl. So if Nikki Barnes got that word back in the penitentiary that that's happening, then niggas on the street had to know that that was happening. So either way it go, either you hitting Nick's girl or you hitting Guy Fisher's girl. That had to be sanctioned. Somebody came in here earlier and said the mob did it over money. Man, what money did Nick owe the mob? Nicky wasn't in debt. Nicky was still handling business just like, just like he said. Eh? He's in prison handling business for the niggas on the streets. 
and niggas is not abiding by the rules or, or, or the oath, Somebody, as somebody said earlier, that they took together as men under the organization as the council. You feel me? He took his lick. That's what niggas don't say. Niggas don't say Nicky took his lick like a man. And, and once other men, that just lets you know this, though. Nicky took his lick and other niggas started doing whole shit that made him flip on. Imagine if them niggas was in the same situation that Nick was in. They would have been flipped. That's all I can say. You feel me? If it takes for a nigga to be out the way for you to start doing whole shit, that's just like a nigga turning. What was they doing when he turned his back anyway? You feel me? Out of sight, out of mind, out of reach type shit. I believe that was a personal side piece hit. No mafia involved over some that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't believe the mob was involved in that at all. Nikki Barnes said he feel, he said, at least in the in the untouchable doc, in the Mr. Untouchable doc, he said he felt like they did that to try to silence him or scare him. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Out of doing what he was doing. So when you say that, and then I've never heard Guy Fisher speak about Shy Mecca. And I wonder if he will in the Troy Reed shit that he's supposed to have coming out. If Troy Reed ever released anything else, you know what I'm saying? But I ain't never heard him speak about it. Nah, my nigga, how did you, if you was with her, how did you feel when they hit her? The nigga walked up in the Monarch bar and popped her top at the bar. You know what I'm saying? So, nigga, it, it's got to be like, it's got to be three or four strong reasons that I feel like Guy Fisher was complicit or sanctioned that hit on Shot Maker. After, after, after Buddy Star, after Nikki Star snitching, you say, oh, okay, that nigga snitched because of this. Cancel that bitch, I'll get a new one. Some Nino shit. You know what I'm saying? Oh, 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 that's the problem, nigga. I can't, or if I can't have her, nobody else can. I can't have her, nobody else can. You feel me? And then we can even flip that coin. I can flip that coin and play devil's advocate with that because Nikki Barnes could have had her hit off too. Think about that. That nigga sent Thelma ass to jail. He sent his wife to jail. When you look at the documentary and you hear the people in the documentary talk about Sean Mecca, they say they knew it was different when it came to her. They knew he cared for her differently. He, his feelings for her was different and this and that and the other. His wife started to speak about how distant he became and this and that and the other when it came down to her. He might have loved her enough to kill her ass for that shit. <clears throat> He might have felt like he did enough for her while he was on the streets and while he was still in the penitentiary or whatnot in order to see it. You should have known better or you should have had better sense or you should have had more respect for me, more loyalty for me, whatever it, it may be. Either one of them two could be the culprits because this is all within the Guy Fisher, not even Guy Fisher, within the Nikki Barnes organization. This is all taking place within the organization. It's not an outside hit, as the dude said. You know what I'm saying? So. <clears throat> who's complicit? Who complicit and who not complicit? Like I said, if these are my successors, nigga, you don't hit my girl. If I'm, you see me in the Apollo hugged up with wifey or with anybody, you don't take her out unless it's on my orders because I'm the boss. Basically, you feel me? You do that, then it's like you you, you dividing the organization. Now nah, you, you causing a, a split. <laughs> you know, the more than the split. You dig what I'm talking about? This is a blood war. Nikki sent all those disloyal women to their demise for breaking those codes. See, you see, see what I'm saying? It's a bunch of ways to look at that. It's a bunch of ways to look at it. 
You know what I'm saying? Mr. Shabazz, what up, though? Shout out to the gang, all the gang in the building. Salute. He say, facts, I'm more on Nikki's side. Me too, man, like shit, man. What the fuck was up with Guy Fisher, though? Nikki said he put himself in a position to dictate orders to me. You don't dictate orders to me. I'm the boss. I put this shit together. Me, that's who, nigga. You, I dictate orders, even from where I'm at. I still got y'all eating. I'm still handling business. These people still looking to me for guidance, nigga. You don't sit at my table, eat my food, nigga, and kick your feet up and thank you, me. <laughs> you feel me? On my behalf, at that, thinking you meet. Nah, nah, we ain't gonna do that. You know what I'm saying? We ain't gonna do that. What the fuck was up with God Fisher, though? Like I said, it don't seem like he fucked with him from the jump. Then y'all throw all that salt on that man name. You, 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 you slide with his girl behind his back. That's an action that you wouldn't have taken while he was on the street. Why do I say that? Because it wasn't going on while he was on the street. There's no mention of that type of shit going on while he was on the street. So, nigga, you waited for him to go inside to be that type of snake or that type of slime ball. Like, you, you know what I'm saying? And do that. It's a million fish in the sea. So all the destruction that came upon you was caused, one, by your brother. This is the guy Fisher dude. One, by his brother for informing to the police about the whole shit. Two, by your own action for fucking breaking the oath that you took amongst men to be a man. You treat my brother as I treat myself, nigga. Would you do that shit to yourself? I don't think so. So you broke an oath, nigga. You feel me? If it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander, yo. Yo, oh, what up? That hit was a mob sanctioned hit from Jay Jello and Matthew Madonna of the Lucianese crime family. Why didn't they hit them? See, okay, I'm going to debate with you about that, Seb. All due respect, shout out to my guy, Seb, across 110th Street. Let's debate, Seb. The mob hit. Okay, everybody want to call it a mob hit. Why they didn't kill his wife? The, the mother of his children. You feel me? The mob, even though we know the mob was in tune with what he's going through and what's going on, what he mean, and they know where he party at, they know who he partying with, they about knew his side pieces and the ones he favored it or not. But, you know, the mob was on that, that bloodline shit. You know, the mob would come in and take the whole house out, and the dog included, and burn that bitch to the ground and shit. So why didn't they kill them? You said it yourself. He cared more for Shamika. Yeah. Within the organization that's being said. But how the mob know that? The mob know he was married to Thelma, though. Facts. Both ways, though. But the mob know he was married to Thelma. Okay. I don't kill a nigga side piece. He go home to it. A nigga be happy you killed the side piece. Go home to his wife like nothing ever happened. If she didn't know, nothing ever happened. You know what I'm saying? Niggas just be crying in the corner. What you crying for? Oh, I miss my father. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to dad. I miss my dad. Miss nothing. Ain't nothing ever happened. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, doggy. Let's flip all the coins over. You know what I'm saying? They knew that. He cared more for Shamika. I mean, you know, we established that. That's what everybody said. We established that. You know what I'm saying? But why not? Like I said, I'm going to hit the family. You can't go wrong. If you try to hurt a nigga, you can't go wrong hit that family. TC the psychic, what up, though? My buzzing, he said he loved his mistress more. A lot of black men do. She hurt him more than his wife. 
I ain't gonna put that on a lot of black men. I'm gonna say this, dog. A mistress to me is like a dice game. Money on the wood, all good. This is a mutually beneficial relationship. If it's like that, I done been there, done that. I wasn't ready to, to shoot and kill over the mistress though. I was on that Ray Charles shit. You ever seen Ray Charles? When he told you, I got a wife, I'm, I'm not leaving my wife. I'm not going to come and B. He wasn't leaving his wife. He wasn't going, he'd do all his dirt. But he wasn't leaving. You, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm on dogs. I was on that tip. You feel me? I was on that tip when I was that type of nigga. Maybe she was killed because of a lot of pillow talking she heard from Nikki and Guy Fisher. <clears throat> By whom no, but but this is what I'm saying though. <clears throat> and then okay. Okay, he said they killed her on 125th Street. That's why I got 125th Street Hall. If you peek the little thing, I got that in the background. Shout out to my guy, TC Disciple. She got killed in a restaurant called the Linux Lounge. They turned it into a Wells Fargo now. That don't hold true for a lot of men, absolutely. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. But I understand the sentiment of what he's saying with that. You know what I'm saying? Straight up and down. When you, when you think about it, we ain't going to go there. That's for another night. You know what I'm saying? The dice game analogy was perfect. Absolutely, homeboy. You know what I'm saying? There's no strings attached to that. You know what I'm getting at? You, you know what I'm saying, homie? You feel me? Shit. I don't pay to stay. I pay to leave, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't pay for conversation. I pay for submission. You know what I'm saying? It just is what it is. You know what I mean? And it ain't tricking if you got it. Hey, yo, oh, I would love to see someone do a story on Blue Thunder. It was rumored to be the biggest H stamp in NY. NYS history, dig that. That's interesting. Y'all cut it out. Y'all fighting? That's on 7th Ave. Wasn't the shooter a white man? Now listen to the clip. Listen to the clip five. I'm going to play this clip back for you. This is the clip of the Q&A between the detective, no, the prosecutor and uh, James Jackson about Raymond Clark doing the hit. Question. So just you and Romar were alone when you had the conversation? Answer. Right. Question. Would you tell us what Romar said? Answer. Romar said, that was my work. The other night up in the Monarch Bar with Shamika Beverly Ash. That was me, red alert. That was my work. And he went to the closet and he pulled out a rubber mask, white face, dark hair, with the eyes cut out and the nose. Cut out, and he put it on. He also took out a dark trench coat and he put it on. And he says, you want to see how I did it? And he came up to me and he said, yes, they think it was a white guy. It wasn't a white guy. It was me, red alert. And he came up to me and he had his back hunched and he said, I walked in with my back hunched down and she was sitting at the bar stool and I just shot her. Q, what type of mask was it that Defendant Clark was wearing? A, it was like one of those Halloween masks B, a rubber mask with dark hair, Caucasian color, with the eyes and the nose cut out, that you could slip over your head. This is from the case files. This is Clark versus the United States, man. <clears throat> if I have time, I'll um, just put up the whole case file or whatnot. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Now, you see what I'm saying? You said, wasn't the shooter a white man? Dog was saying it was him. He had a mask on. 
he, he basically disguised himself as a white man. Y'all see that? Clark versus the U.S.? Memorandum and order, Richard Owen, district judge. Now that's what I'm saying. Dog was charged with this. Now nah. you feel me? This is on. This is dog. Dog. Dog supposed to killed her and her brother. Her brother's name was Stephen Ash. He's supposed to kill Shamecha and Stephen Ash at the Monarch Bar. Listen to this. It says, in the 1980s, Raymond Clark, among members of others, was a co-conspirator with James Jackson, who more or less took over the Nicky Barnes drug empire in Harlem, New York. Clark was convicted August 25th, 1988, after a four-month trial before me and was sentenced to 50 years imprisonment. The enterprise distributed millions of dollars of narcotics over a seven year period in New York, Connecticut, Washington, DC, and elsewhere. And its members committed at least seven murders and promoted the at least seven murders to promote the enterprise with Clark. According to evidence at trial, personally shooting three of them, Norman Bannister, Beverly Ash, and Stephen Ash. You dig what I'm talking about? That's where Shamika got killed at, the Monarch Bar. Nah, I say uh, 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 Clark's memorandum on this motion erroneously asserts that the hearsay from a confidential informant was the only evidence against Clark. The fact is, to the contrary, James Jackson, the leader who had taken a plea testified to Clark telling him just how Clark had committed each of the three murders. As to Bannister's murder, what did Clark tell you happened at the bar? He told me that when he went in the bar, the bar was pretty crowded and that Norman was playing Pac-Man and that when he seen Junior on the door, he went behind Norman Bannister and shot him in the head. I said a lot of the information you're looking for is right is right at your fingertips. You know what I'm saying? Okay, it was a white man mass that was clever, and Jim Jackson told on the Gambinos as well in the heroin case with Gene Gotti and Mark. Ritter. Yeah, would you describe Romar? Romar being Clark. Romar, what he said, would you describe Romar? Clark was frequently referred to as Romar. Demeanor after he talked to you about the homicides. He just described what it was as if nothing had happened. <clears throat> Asked to Beverly Murders asked, did there come a time when you had a conversation with Raymond Clark, with the defendant Raymond Clark? Yes. What did he say? Um, a few days after Mike told me about staying away from the Monarch Bar. Staying away from the Monarch Bar. Um, where were you when you had the conversation with Clark? I was on Eugene. I was in Eugene Romero's apartment in the Bronx on Clinton Ave. Who lived in that apartment? Eugene Romero, Sharice, and Romar, who was present during the conversation. Romar, Sharice, and Mike. But Mike was in the bedroom along with Sharice when the conversation took place with myself and Romar. So just you and Romar were alone when, the when you had the conversation. Answer, right. Question, would you tell us what Romar said?
Seb say all them niggas became witnesses except Guy Fisher. If you know, you know. Yeah, all them niggas start talking. That's what I'm saying. All of them start talking. Shit, God brother was talking though. So shit, who's to say that his brother didn't say, well, I ain't nothing. That nigga was a paid fall guy and owed the Colombo crime family. It's rumored he killed the brother, but not Shemeca. I'm going to call you all. That's interesting. What did she say? I, well, y'all heard the clip. This is just the clip right here. I was about to read and shit. Where he said he put on the mask and shot her. <clears throat> but yeah, that's that's what I'm saying though. Who would do that shit? Now, dog, the the Jackson nigga didn't take the the family over by force. He they, he didn't take the family over by force. So for him to send the hit out to kill Shameka and her brother, or for that to happen under his watch with Romar, which would be Raymond uh, Clark. You feel me? Cut it out, dog. Who did that and why, man? Who sent that order in? You'd have been a factor. So what reason would you have to go against uh, 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 the, your teacher, your motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? For lack of better words. I don't know. It just make a bunch of sense, man. But the one thing is for sure, though, them Fisher niggas wasn't, wasn't no good for, for, for Nikki. <laughs> they didn't mean Nikki no good. You know what I mean? I heard God was messing with them boys in prison. Man, I can't tell you. I didn't keep up with him like that. But the way Troy Reed talk about him, like he stands on some type of, I don't know. I don't know. I can't speak correctly to his, uh, I can't speak correctly to his uh, demeanor or the man he is, was, or whatnot. All I know is what I've read, so. I ain't never heard, I didn't heard that once. I can't say I ain't never heard it, but I don't know it to be true. So I don't want to spread that on him, but I done heard that a couple times. I ain't gonna say I haven't, my dog. I just gotta keep it a buck with you. James Jimmy Jackson had the Gambino connection that blew to the feds came. And Jimmy told on everyone and the Gambinos. Mr. Fraser, what up, though? How you be? Man, I was looking at her pictures, man. It seemed like she about still is, man. You know what I'm saying? Rest in peace to Beverly Ash, man, a.k.a. Sha Matthew. She was beautiful. I ain't on front, man. That's off, homie. Let me see what else we got. Troy Reed was peddling Guy Fisher's balls with no hand breaks. <laughs> you just might be right, homie. You feel me? But I'm getting out of here, man. Until next time, man. I just had to come through and share it with y'all what was on my mind, man. You get in the comments and let me know what you think. Shout out to the gang that came through. Peace to all the guys and earths in attendance. You know what I'm saying? And we'll see y'all next time, man. More content next time. More fighting. You know how I come. We with it.
tell you I ain't never been a bitch, nigga I pop niggas, bitch, I'm really with the shits, nigga I hit niggas, double barrel to his abs When that Mossberg hit him, watch a nigga do a dab These pussy niggas wanna see me dead Since bottle nine, I done had a ticket on my head I kill shooters, tell that nigga get his bread back Hey, swim the game, I done send that nigga head back Whoever said that love begets love was wrong I'm from a city where blood begets blood It's love to the niggas mug That ain't bugs and cuffs That's choppers for that loose fuck I'm coming plug you up Pussy, push me I bet you never see another day Top at your face Bet you never see another day When I get to shooting this mother